Today on The Point, a man with invisibility powers in scripture. And we'll sing God of This City. Sight is an incredible gift. It's amazing to be able to see others, see beauty, see creation. But sometimes a more incredible gift than to be able to see is to be seen. Today we're going to look at a story from the Bible about a man who lacked the ability to see, but really was just longing to be seen. Jesus is, in John chapter 8, Jesus and his followers are in the temple. And it's the Sabbath day, so it's extremely busy as it's the center of worship. But thousands of God worshipers have all missed something that day. At the door of the temple uh, sat a blind beggar, a man who was blind since birth, and they all missed him. Was he invisible? I imagine they just all stepped over him on their way to worship. But it says in John chapter 9, that as he passed by, Jesus saw him. Do you feel the significance of that? Others stepped over him. Others wrote him into the backdrop of the play in which they were the star. But Jesus saw him, recognized his humanity, acknowledged his whole person. He knew him and loved him. He saw him. He saw his need and he met it. And I'm blessed to be a part of Advent Church because we're a church that does that. We see needs and we meet them. A great example of this is our Christian Life Center, our rec center. Back in 1988, Advent was growing like crazy and overflowing their worship area, and they could have built a new sanctuary. But Advent also looked around them in the community, and they saw the people. They saw the need for a rec center, some sort of recreational facility. And so instead of building a sanctuary at that point, they decided, let's build our Christian Life Center to see a need and meet it in our community. After Jesus sees this blind beggar, his disciples are busy arguing about what caused this man's sin. Was it because, or his blindness? Was it because his parents sinned? Or was it because he sinned that he was born blind? And Jesus decides to end their argument. He says, it's not because his parents sinned. It's not because he sinned. He's in need so that we can meet it. So that God can serve him through us. And that's what we should do. We don't sit back and pontificate on why someone's in need. We see the need and we meet it. But Jesus uses a really strange way of healing this man. It says in John chapter 9 that he reached down into the dirt. He spit into the dirt and made mud with the saliva. He anoints the man's eyes and then tells him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. He uses dirt and spit and water to heal this man, to serve this man. This is the point of the story. This is where we should see ourselves, is that we are God's means to bring healing to our neighbors. We are the, the dirt and the spit and the water to be able to see others and meet their needs. We have been at Advent, God's means to serve the neighborhood, and we can still be that. The dirt and the spit and the water, we can see and serve others. We can write people into the story, pull them out of the backdrop, be the means of God's love for the neighborhood. But why do we do it? Why do we serve our neighbors? Why have we done that as this church, and why can we continue to do that? Well, the gospel truth of this story is that before we are the means of God to bring healing, before we're the dirt and the spit and the water in this story, we're the blind beggar. We are the ones that are lost and without hope. We are blind in our faith. No hope to reach our salvation on our own. And yet Jesus says, I came not to be served, but to serve. And Jesus saw me. And he served me and he saved me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And so when we are without hope of our own salvation, God sends his son in the flesh 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth to live the life we should have lived and take the penalty for our sin and his death on the cross and then be resurrected to bring healing and forgiveness. Before we're the means of God, we are the ones in need of God and his healing in our lives. And so when we see that, it compels us to go and serve others. Because if you've ever been healed or served or seen, then you know that somebody else was the dirt and the spit and the water, the means of God to serve you. And so now the gospel is our why. We are now called to go into our neighborhood and serve others as the means of God to do that. And look, we can never imagine a new gospel. This gospel story of love and grace is written in stone. We can never imagine a new one, and we don't need to. It is the beautiful gospel of God's grace. But we are free to imagine how we can deliver that gospel to others. We're able to dream. We're able to get creative. See those that others have stepped over. To see them and reach them and meet their needs. To deliver the gospel of God's love to them today. And when we imagine, when we get creative about how to do that, I want you to ask yourself this question. What would you do if God was the God of this city? What if God is actually sovereign? What if God has incredible love for Cordova? for Memphis, for Shelby County. Let your imagination run wild and do not put any other limits on it than the limitless grace of God. We have received such incredible grace and healing. We've been seen and served and saved by Christ. And so let's take that into the world to see others and to meet their needs. Let's pray. Oh God, give us courage and boldness. And let us remember the gospel of grace. That although we could not see, you still saw us. So propel us with that to see others. To pull people into the story. To meet needs. Serve our neighborhood. All so that people can be turned to look at Christ and worship him. Give us that blessing today. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. We need to take it from that pre-chorus one more time. Look, we need our imagination to run wild, Advent. If God is the God of this city, if God is sovereign over this city, what is our container? Where is our dirt, our spit, our water? How can we be people who have been saved by grace and ready to activate into this world? We're going to sing this one more time. and I just want your imagination to run wild. Imagination that thinks God is the God of this city and there are still greater things to come. What is that? What's that going to be? I'm not sure, but we've been faithful to the gospel and God has been faithful to us. There is no one, no one like our God. Let's sing this. Let your imagination run. Oh, there is no one like God, God, yeah. There is no one like God, God. Let's sing that again. Oh, there is no one like God, God. One more time now. There things, Lord. Great things are yet to come. Great things are still to be done in this city. 
We're so glad that you've made us part of your faith journey. We would love to meet you in person sometime. If you want to join us at Advent Church any Sunday morning, it would be great to get to know you that way. If you're watching us on Facebook, make sure that you like the videos and that you share them. And if you're on YouTube, make sure that you like it, you subscribe, and you set up your notifications so that you know every time we post a new video. Thanks for joining us on The Point.